One of the most important things about conservation is that it's a long-term venture. AWC's been going now for 25 odd years. They've got a, a long history of, of ongoing commitment to conservation and ongoing resourcing and, and really that's, that's a big part of it. You can't just sort of go into these ventures with a view of doing it for three years or something like that. This is a, a very long-term approach. Matt Gibson is doing the largest reintroduction project in Australia at the moment, so putting nine threatened species back. So no one's um, ever attempted to put so many species back within a uh, feral predator uh, free area. It's the largest feral predator fenced area on the WA mainland and we've completely eradicated feral predators, so cats and foxes from that area. The threatened species that we reintroducing at Mount Gibson um, were once found in this region but are now all regionally extinct um, and we know that feral predator fences are really the only successful method um, available for putting these animals back into the wild. A lot of Australia's native mammals can't survive with the predation pressure from cats and foxes. By providing these fenced feral predator free areas we have these safe havens where the animals can live and survive in an environment where they don't have the risk of predation and those populations are secure and they can be drawn on in the future when we have a better solution for cats and foxes but at the moment that's what we've got and that's what's the best chance of protecting these species. So we're working with the Department of Environment and Water here at St Peter Island which is off the west coast of the Air Peninsula and we're catching greater stick nest rats to supplement the population at Mount Gibson. So the greater stick nest rat used to be all across the southern parts of Australia and in the 1930s they were extinct on the mainland predominantly due to predation by feral introduced predators. There's only six populations of them and they don't exist anywhere that's got introduced predators. So they only exist behind fences or on islands. Following the extinction of the greatest thickness rats on the mainland, they discovered that there was a naturally existing thickness rat population on the Franklin Islands, which is the last remaining natural population of thickness rats in the world. St Peter's Island was proclaimed a conservation park in 1988. During that time, a reintroduction program of betongs was commenced on the island. Once that was found to be really successful, they uh, translocated some stick nest rats in 1993. The population at Mount Gibson was founded with animals from the Franklin Islands and supplemented uh, by animals bred at Alice Springs Desert Park, but we really need some extra genetics to get a good, robust, viable population at Mount Gibson. So um, a whole bunch of genetic analysis was done and St Peter Island was decided as the most appropriate site for various reasons. Today we are setting up our trapping grid for our stick nest rats. So we're doing a 10 by 10 grid, so 100 traps today, which is quite a lot to get out. And we're putting them in areas where we think um, stick nest rats might be. So you can see little trails where they've been running around a lot, or you can see little runnels where they've been going in under bushes. Um, so we try and put them around spots like that. With this is one of the better methods of trapping stick nest rats. We've got a hundred traps out tonight. Uh, hopefully we have some success in the morning. To catch these rats we do a combination of Elliot trapping and then also spotlighting from the back of the ute. So we're just looking out using spotlights and then also the thermal imaging scope and looking for a bit of movement that'll tell us there's a rat there. If we see it, we'll just hit on the car roof and um, jump out and surround it and then hopefully be able to catch it with one of our hand nets down there. Oh, 
So we've just caught our first greatest thickness rat for the trip. Um, and hopefully this one will come back with us to Mount Gibson. It's a male. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. So total weight yep. is 410. 7795. So we've just put a microchip in him and that's just a unique number so that when we go back to Mount Gibson and we release him there we can keep track of him if we catch him again. Oh, awesome. AWC's mission is the protection of all of Australia's fauna and the habitats that they live in. Uh, we do that through acquisition and management of land around Australia. Through that we've been able to protect some of the largest populations of Australia's most threatened species. Feral free areas like at Scotia and Newcomara hold some of the largest remaining populations of species like numbats and bilbies, bridled nail tail wallabies. The project we're doing at Mount Gibson is aiming to achieve similar results. Instead of trying to prevent declines, we're actively increasing the species. We're creating new populations. We're increasing the number of species or the number of animals of those species that are left in Australia. It's active conservation and it's, it's not a matter of holding to decline. It's proactively increasing and achieving results. It's not preventing things, it's achieving things. Uh, we plan to have a flight this morning with the first round of greatest thickness rats to go to Mount Gibson. But unfortunately, last night, uh, the team out spotlighting caught a second male who was displaying some, what we've considered uh, concerning symptoms. So given that of seven males we've caught so far, two have displayed issues that we can, would consider them not healthy for translocation, we've decided to seek further advice. My name's Jerome Calvis, I'm a vet from Zoos SA and I've been flown out here to do a disease surveillance and stick mass The heaviest is 300, yeah. I, I don't think the likelihood of infectious disease is going to be really high, mm -hmm. but I've got a little portable vaporizer so we can knock them out, give them a few sniffs of gas yeah. um, and we'll get some gloves, take some swabs, just have a general common health check. bit of a bite wound on the kind of lateral right tail. Okay. Um, I think all of the rest are looking pretty good. There's nothing out of the ordinary with a few traumatic wounds, which is part of the ordinary, I suppose. Um, and I, I would imagine they should be fit to translate that by that. We got a call from the vets this morning and the good news is the rats have been given the all clear so we can go ahead with the translocation. So that means the rats we've currently got will be flying out tomorrow to find their new home at Mount Gibson. Because you're moving animals from one habitat to another, there's a lot of time and investment put into this and actually a lot of money as well. So maximising the, the chances that any translocated animals are, are going to survive and reproduce increases the chances that the translocation is successful. And obviously we're working on threatened species pretty well always, so they have an inherent importance in that sense that just by their nature there's usually not many populations left and some of those populations are quite small, you know, and so each individual is, is, is very important. The first thing for me is that we have a group of very well trained and happy staff um, with, a, with a good team of people. That, that's probably the most important thing actually in terms of animal ethics. And there's a lot of planning that goes in, into this as well. But even when you get out here, you've still got to make, make decisions sometimes. Um, and, and that again comes back to having a good team of people who really know what they're doing and actually really care about the animals and their welfare.
the morning of the translocation, the St. Peter Island team packaged up the animals into little wooden boxes and then they were chopped off the island to Sejuna, where they were put into a light plane and flown out to Mount Gibson. We're releasing the greatest Ignest rats into a feral proof fenced area. So it's, a, it's about 7,800 hectares and it's part of a greater reintroduction program where we've already released eight endangered mammal species. Greatest Ignest rats were the first uh, mammal species reintroduced to Mount Gibson in 2014. So once we've attached the transmitters uh, up in the lab at Mount Gibson, we wait until dusk because greater stick nest rats are a nocturnal animal. And then we drive them out here to release them into pre-selected sites. So these were selected based on their high quality habitat for greater stick nest rats. And also within 500 metres to a kilometre of known greater stick nest rat populations so that we could get a good <laughs> genetic intermingling happening uh, when they're released. So this is an existing stick nest rat house at Mount Gibson. So you can see in here there's a little tunnel where they've kind of converted it and there'll be runways through here. So at least one rat lives in here. We've been monitoring it with cameras. And another obvious sign that this is an active nest is that there's a little dirt runway. So they kind of dig out a little driveway for themselves and then use it as the entrance to the tunnel. And there's also scat around so you can tell that there's been a rat here recently. in there. So we've just been uh, radio tracking one of the females with the transmitter attached and we've tracked her down to this wood pile so she's in here and her transmitter is still attached. I can see her so she's still alive which is great and she's found herself a nice day refuge. <laughs> 